scripture. Gospel's lesson this today is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. At Hanukkah, the religious authorities questioned Jesus about being the Christ. It was a festival of dedication in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple, in the Procolio of Solomon. How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in the name of God, my father and mother, they bear witness to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. God, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of God's hand. I and God, the mother and father, are one. Please add a blessing on this reading. Glory be to the Maker. instructions in the Jewish law about how to do it. It's not something new. All they've done, or all they're going to do if, if things proceed as it looks like they will, they will not end abortion. They'll just end safe abortions. It will still happen. So on that note, good morning and happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Today we celebrate motherhood. 
We remember and we lift up our own mothers and others that have nurtured us and helped raise us and other people to where we are today. Being a mother is not easy. I cannot even imagine carrying a baby in my body and giving birth. It's not possible for me to understand that experience. But I have experienced motherhood in the fact that I had a great mother that was much wiser and kind than any person I have ever known. The way my mother used to sit down with me and show me and teach me many things about life. She gave me many a wise saying to live by and much, much advice on my direction in life. And I will have to add probably most of her wise saying she gave me I couldn't repeat in church or she. <laughs> but she did tell me two things that later on in life it hit me what she was talking about. And you've heard me share this before. One was, she said, don't ever do something just because other people think you should. Said, okay. She said, don't ever get married just because you think it's the thing you're supposed to do. Uh, okay, now when I got in college, I realized, oh, that's what she was talking about. The other one was, Roy, go to school, make good grades, get an education, and get the hell out of here. <laughs> she knew I didn't fit in. She knew that I was different. And she loved me. I used to sit and watch her crochet. She's one of these people that could go to the county fair, look at the crochet exhibits, come home and sit down and start crocheting mm -hmm. without any instructions. Yeah. Has anyone ever seen that? I, it's funny, I was thinking about it yesterday. She had a big goose that was crocheted and a big long neck. And she worked and worked on that thing. And then you had to starch it with sugar starch, I think is what they used, so that it would be stiff and stand up. And it was like a fruit bowl, you set it in the middle of the table, put things in it. It was, you know, the body was like this long, and it was probably that high. And I thought, what do that is? No, no, if I had it, I wouldn't be able to starch it and make it stand up like she did. But she was a very smart person. And had it not been for the circumstances and the times that she was raised in, would have probably been an activist for people in need. She was filled with compassion and wisdom. Today I'd like for us to all celebrate all mothers of the world, those that have already lived their lives and those that are still living. Mothers of all types, those who have actually given birth and those that have adopted others to nurture. Those of all abilities, all sizes, all races, and all genders. I've had several mothers in my life. And there's been a few times when I've told people, back off. I had one mother and I haven't been looking for another one. <laughs> Quit telling me what to do. But there have been people on my journey and given me a whole lot of advice and guidance and wisdom. All that they had to give. And most of them were male. I only have one female mother figure in my life right now, Regina, <laughs> <laughs> who gives me advice and would probably like to grab hold of my ear sometimes and twist it, but she hasn't so far. Those who have patience, who have had the patience and understanding and passion, not only for me, but for all the people that entered their lives. Not all mothers are perfect. Let me say that again. Not all mothers are perfect. Let us face reality. Some people have had mothers that did things that were not necessarily good for them. Not all mothers make great decisions. Have you always made the right decisions? No. None of us have. Haven't we all made mistakes? Haven't we all given untimely advice to those people around us? Not all mothers plan to be mothers. Some people just do not have the ability or the calling to be a mother. Some have become mothers by accident or not by their own choice. But I believe all who have given birth to another have made decisions that they thought was correct one for their child and for them. Some have given their children away. Some have abandoned them because they did not know that they had any other choice. 
but they had the welfare of their child in mind. Some know that they're not able to provide and raise a child. And if they can't, then they need to give that child to someone else. Some loving person, maybe even a same-sex couple, to raise that child. I find it hard to believe that, and this has changed a lot in the last few years, but it wasn't that long ago that same-sex couples could not adopt. And I think, okay, what you're saying to me is this child in a foster home is better off than having a loving parent if it's two women or two men. It doesn't make sense. The one thing about gay couples that have children, that are not children, they do it knowing they want them. You know, it's, the child is a thrust upon them. They go out and welcome the child into their life. Usually they've discussed it. It's, it's not by accident. Some mothers probably had bad experiences in a horrible life. They could not bear to pass that on to their children. We cannot know the heart of the intentions of mothers who sometimes do not seem like they make good decisions on their journeys. We will probably never know that we should not judge their hearts or their intentions. I do believe that motherhood, whether it be David raising a teenage boy, which almost turned out to be more than he could handle, whether it be somebody that has, and I'm going to go there, I think our pets are like children. I, we have the same emotions for them. You know, poor Dasher, you know, I'm so overly protected, he can't do anything. Don't do that. Don't go past that sidewalk. Stay in this yard. Come back here. You've been laying in the sun too long. Get in the shade. You know, he's like, Ugh. Leave me alone. Having children, though it's a wonderful thing, I even enjoyed teaching school. I learned some things my first year because I had seventh graders. <laughs> Everything was dramatic. The first two or three days, I had a little girl that was crying. I said, what's wrong? Oh, Susie won't speak to me anymore. Okay, get another friend. You know, everything is dramatic to them. But it was a good experience. When you have parent-teacher night, and a really nice, well-dressed woman sticks her head in your classroom and goes, Hi. And I go, hi. I kind of knew who she was because she was black. And I only had one black student. And I said, come on in. She said, no, no, no. I know you've got things to do. I just wanted to stop by and see what you look like. Cheryl talks about you all the time. And at the end of that year, Cheryl gave me a picture, her graduation picture. And on the back, she said, someday I'm going to find you and we're going to get married. <laughs> Wonderful woman. It would be nice to know where she is now. Or to have a student meet you on the beach in the summertime. A student that you had last year that failed your class. And Doug come walking down the beach carrying his surfboard. That's probably the reason he failed class, by the way. The school was across the highway from the ocean. And I said, hi, Doug. You having a good summer? Yes. I said, good, good. I'm going to get back in your class again this year. I said, Doug, why would you want to get back in my class? You failed it last year. He said, I know, but you're a good teacher. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> he said, it was me. And that next year, he got back in my class, and he made a B. It was up to him. And then one day, he said to me, you know, Mr. Dennington? I said, what? He said, if I could have any father I wanted, I'd pick you. Oh. Yeah. And here I am in the middle of school campus going, 
Go there. Go to the next slide. <laughs> we all have motherhood in us. You know, and it's not just that stereotype of the sweet little old lady that cooks for you, cleans your clothes. It's caring and loving about with other people. It's reaching out and trying to protect people without being overly protective. Trying to guide people without being overly persuasive or demanding. It's about wanting someone else to be happy and wanting them to have a good life. Gee, doesn't that sound like God? You know, I incorporate in my prayers now that I love God. I say, God, I love you. Because I better understand what it's about. Love is wanting someone to be happy. That's simple, I know, but that's kind of what it might boil down to. I want God to be happy with my journey. I want God to be happy with this church's journey. That's what motherhood is about. God is the Alpha and the Omega who created all of us in God's own image. God was the first mother. We rejoice today in all of our ancestors who have passed on the chain of life to us, especially those who have nursed us when we were sick, those who have cured for us in the absence of our own mothers sometimes, and all who have nourished us spiritually with their wisdom and their faith. We rejoice to all of our family in the ties that bind us in the family of faith in the church, whether they be close to us or far away. God, we are grateful today in this church for that chain of life that links us all back to the apostles and all the way back to creation. I ask God to make us strong in both our paternal and maternal virtues, however we may define them. God made us in God's own image. And I ask myself sometimes, how am I reflecting that image? What am I doing that makes people see what God has done is good? I ask God to draw us together in worship and in unity, that we can have peace, that bloodshed will end, that war will end, that no mother will be called to give up their children to die for a country or government. I pray that God guide us and bless us as we seek to be honest with ourselves. I pray that God will hasten the day when all people of all races and nationalities become one in spirit with us, with each other. It's in the name of Jesus Christ today that I pray that we always worship, follow our instincts, the Holy Spirit, and that we all try to be the best mothers of creation that we can possibly be. Amen. Amen.